Hi, this video is about using MailSlurp in your Postman requests. MailSlurp is an API that lets you create and control email and SMS anywhere, including in your Postman tests. To find the MailSlurp Postman collections, go to docs.mailsurp.com and click on Postman. Then click on Open Postman and you'll find the MailSlurp Postman collections. So if we look under the public collections, we can find a number of endpoints. The most important is the MailSlurp API. So this collection contains all the MailSlurp API endpoints and we can see them listed here on the left hand side. You can find the documentation on all our API endpoints at docs.mailslurp.com slash API. Now in order to make a request to MailSlurp, we first need to fork one of these collections. So if we click here, view more actions and then click create a fork, we can check out this collection into our own workspace. So I'm going to call this mail slurp API examples. Okay, now that we have forked the mail slurp API, we can use it to send and receive email. The first step is to set up authorization using our mail slurp API key. If we click the authorization tab here, we can see that the X API key header is expecting an API key variable. Now, in order to set that, we just need to log into our MailSlip account and fetch the API key from the dashboard. If we go to app.mailslip.com and log in, we can find our API key at the top here. I'm going to click copy now. And then back in my collection, I can paste in the API key and save the collection. Okay, so now let's uh, demonstrate using the API. So I'm going to create a new email address using Postman. And if I open up the inboxes path here and click with defaults, I find a request called create an inbox with default options. So it's posting to the base URL, our api.mailslip.com slash inboxes with defaults. So let's click send. And we can see here a 201 response status. And in the JSON body, we see our email address. So the email address is highlighted here, a long number at mailsop.xyz, and we have an ID of the inbox as well. Now, if we go back to our dashboard and look in the inboxes, we can see that this email address was created. And here we can see that no emails have been received yet. So if we send an email to this address, we should be able to see it using Postman. So here in Outlook, I'm gonna send an email to this address. And let's send that now. Now if we go back to Postman, we can use the wait for latest email method to wait for this email to arrive. So by searching for wait for, I can see the request here, get latest email in an inbox. Okay, so we can see some parameters available. The default values are exported automatically from our API generator. And we need to replace those with values that make sense for our use case. So for the inbox ID, let's use this inbox ID that we created earlier. And for the timeout, let's put um, 30 seconds in milliseconds, okay? We'll check the authorization, it's using the parent. And when we click send, we can see our email below. So what this did was it waited for an email to arrive in the inbox up to 30 seconds. Because the email had already arrived by now, it returns immediately. We can see in the JSON body the recipients, the sender, and the to address. If we scroll down, we can find the headers, the body, subject, and attachments. If we reload our dashboard, we can also view the email visually. So if I open this, I can see the email rendered here. I can also perform additional checks like spam rating and HTML validation. Okay, now what if I want to use this request as part of a test or a collection that I run? Okay, so in this case, I might want to store the email ID that was returned so I can look up information about this email in later steps. So here in the JSON body, I see ID and a value. So to store that in a script, we can use these snippets here on the right, and I'm going to set, set a collection variable, so I'll use it like that, okay? And we will say the email ID, and we will put here json data dot 
ID. So now we need to define that JSON data as well. I'm going to use this snippet over here. So we can parse the JSON response. Expect, we can remove that. And then we can set the variable. We'll give this little test a name. Okay, let's run that and see if it works. Great, and we can see the test results have passed. So in the next request, we might want to delete that email. So if I search for delete, I can see a delete an email method here. And if we use the email ID as a variable there, that means if we connect these requests together, we can run them as a step. Okay, so I ran the request using that email ID variable I set in the previous step, and we can see a 204 no content, meaning the email has been deleted. And if we go back to our inbox here, we can now see that there are no emails in the inbox. The Mail Slurp workspace on Postman also provides some example collections. For example, basic email functions or testing email verification codes. If we look into these, they're actually runnable collections that pass variables between each step. So they demonstrate how you can use MailSlurp in your tests to create email addresses, receive emails, extract out content, and use them in sub subsequent tests. Let's take a look at this test email verification codes example. So what this does is it tests a demo app, the Strawberry app, that allows us to create accounts with emails and passwords. If I demonstrate now the functionality, the app accepts a user sign up and then asks us to confirm using a confirmation code. If we go back to our account, we can see here the confirmation code has been received. But how do we extract that value in our Postman tests so that we can test this application's underlying API endpoints? Well, that's exactly what this collection does. Okay, so let's fork this collection and take a closer look at a real-life example of end-to-end -end authentication testing using MailSlip. So I'll click fork now. And I'm going to give this a name. E2E tests. Now in my forked collection, let's take a deeper look. So in authorization, we can see an API key is being set. So this will be my MailSlip API key value. So back on my dashboard homepage, I'm going to copy that value and I'm going to set that value there and save it. Now the variables are describing the servers we will be calling in this test. So we can see a test server base URL. Here it's pointing to the Strawberry app test server, which is here, and the mail server API. And it has a number of collection variables that will be set throughout the process. So you can see they're empty now except for the password, and the password will be used to submit a sign-up. So the first step is to check the health, and afterwards we run a test saying we expect a 200. So that's pretty normal. Let's run that and see if that works. Great, the server is up, so we can proceed with our next step. The next step is to create an email address. So we're just going to call the inboxes with defaults again. And if we look at the script here, after the request, we are doing a few things. We're parsing the JSON. We're um, making an assertion about the response keys. And we are storing the ID and the email address of the inbox so we can use it in a subsequent step during the sign-up process. Here we are calling the API at MailSlip, and let's send it now. Okay, and we can see the test is passing, a new email address has been created, and the body contains those values that will be stored in variables. Now, if we look at the next step, we're actually calling our server sign up form. So back here in the account, this uh, sign up form, if we have a look at the source, it's actually posting a uh, form to sign up. So we can do the same thing from Postman to test this application in Postman. 
So we can see here that we're doing a post request to the server base URL slash sign up, which is where the form submits. And we're passing these variables, email address and password, which will fill the form. And here we're using the dynamically set collection variables to assign values to here. So remember they were set in the previous step and the password was defined in our uh, collection variables. So if we run this now, we can see the server responded with a message saying a confirmation code was sent to this address. Please extract it and post it to the confirm endpoint. Great, okay. And what are we doing in the scripts? In the scripts, we just expect a response 200 status because it didn't return any meaningful information that we can store. What we need to do next is actually receive that email from the inbox and then we're going to extract the code somehow. So what we're doing is we're calling the mail slurp uh, base URL slash wait for latest email. We're passing an inbox ID and we're using the variable and then a timeout. And we're going to wait, um, looks like six seconds there for an email to arrive. We might want to make that a little bit longer. I'll make it 60. And we're saying unread only true. So we want to wait for the first unread email and we're going to wait up to 60 seconds for it to arrive. And if it doesn't arrive within that time, we'll assume something went went wrong. And uh, in our scripts, after the response, we're going to assign those values that we had returned about the email to a variable. So let's send that and see if it works. Great. Okay. So we can see in our response body, here is an email, full email with um, somewhere in here will be the content saying, please confirm your email. Your code is this value. Great. Okay. So we're almost there. Now we just want to store this value um, in a variable so we can submit it to the confirm endpoint. Now um, we could possibly do that in these scripts here, but what we're going to do instead is we're just going to assign the email ID uh, to a variable. And in the next step, we're going to use MailSlip itself. It's built in um, code extraction tools to get that, that code. So the next step is we're calling this content match endpoint. Now, why don't we just take a look at the um, documentation quickly. And if we search here for content match, we can see the request we're going to make. Okay, so this request um, takes in a regex pattern and returns match results based on the email body. Okay, so we need to pass in an ID and for the body, JSON, request body, we want to pass in a pattern. So it's a Java style regex pattern and um, it gives us some examples there about how that works. Okay, so we can see in the body of this request, we're passing this pattern, your confirmation code is and then this regex capture group. And in the next step, we are going to be using the response data and the matches and then storing that as a code that we can submit to our test application later. So let's send that request. Great. All right. Look at the response here. So we pass the email ID to emails, email ID, content match, and we passed a body with a pattern here and it's returned the pattern and the matches. So it's conventional for the first match to be um, your whole match and the second match to be the groups. So this is the first group. So that's at index one. So we can see here that we're storing that value as code to index one. Great, so now we can actually submit this code to the demo application. Remember this confirm screen, it requires the code that was sent to us and our email address to confirm the account before we can log in. So in the params for this endpoint, we can see the email address is using the email address variable and the code is using the code variable that was also set in our extract step. And then afterwards we can see we're just um, confirming it's a 200 response. Let's click send. And we can see the user is confirmed. The last step is to log in again and we should get a success message. So I'll send that as well. And we see login successful. So what we have now done is we have tested in Postman the full end-to-end -end authentication flow in a real application using mail slurp disposable email accounts. This is a really great feature for all the QA testers out there because it means you can deeply test a real application using real email addresses. So you know that these processes are fundamentally working. 
Okay, so let's run that whole thing again and um, see how it goes. So if we go to the uh, run collection area and we ensure all our tests are set, we can persist the responses and then let's run that. And we can see all the tests are passing. So it's calling the server, it's creating an email address with MailSlurp, signing up for an email, receiving the code, extracting the code, submitting it and logging in. So I hope that helps to explain MailSlurp and the Postman collections. For more help, see our videos on YouTube or go to docs.mailslurp.com. Thanks.